And the rules around stop and search being relaxed, allowing thousands more police officers to use the tactic. Last year, we know killings using a knife or sharp instrument reached their highest level since records began. Well, let's talk to Ken Hines of the Haringey Stop and Search Monitoring Group and Peter Kirkham, former Detective Chief Inspector with the Metropolitan Police. Good to see you both. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. This is all about protecting communities, Ken. That's what they're saying, but but the, the action says else um, otherwise. Because, as I said, we've been going through this. We've been here before. In fact, we've been here for the last 40 years. But yet, we're still doing the same things and making the same mistakes. If you think, at the end of the day, that increasing the Section 60 and um, the no suspicion stop and search is going to make any difference to the violence on there, the only difference it's going to make is that somewhere down the line, you're going to have a major public outbreak of, 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 of violence that's going to, like, like we did in 2011. And I'm saying only because I don't believe the police who are carrying out the stops and search are doing it in a professional manner. We talked about body cam, it's supposed to be a game changer. But if the police are not using the body cam in the appropriate way, switching it on as and when they want, and there's no disciplinary effect on, 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 on the misuse of it, how are we going to have any confidence in a community that's been disproportionately affected by the violence? All right, Peter, the police aren't being professional. No evidence for that whatsoever. There are occasions where cameras either don't work or aren't switched on when they should have been through errors and mistakes, but there's no evidence whatsoever of wholesale um, misuse of it. But why, why is this an effective form of, of policing in your eyes as a, a police officer? Lots of people want bobbies on the beat, yeah? What do they want them to do? Go around kissing babies and patting dogs on the head or doing policing? Not engaging. If they're going to do policing, what are they going to do? They're going to see something suspicious and act on it. And the two things that they can do if they see something suspicious is speak to somebody and, if necessary, do a stop and search if those initial conversations don't lead to those suspicions being allayed, uh, or arrest them. If they don't do those things, there's absolutely no point in police officers being on the street because the crimes would still just take place and then they just wave at these bobbies wandering around doing nothing. Uh, and Ken, is, is your objection to stop and search or the way that it's deployed? It's the way that it's deployed. It's, it's, it's the racial profiling element. There that is, is no that, racial, there's racial profiling element that sees so far that we're nine, to one, we're nine times more likely to be stopped and searched on the Pace Act. When it comes to Section 60, we're 20 to 30 times more likely to be stopped and searched. And I'm saying to you, Section 60, the no suspicion, has got a low hit rate. So that means that they're not even taking knives off the street. And when they get knives off the street, they're getting more knives from, from, uh, from a white um, person than black. So on, on the section 60. You can look at the data. Stop, stop and search does three things. It disrupts, makes it more difficult for people that want to carry knives or drugs or do drug dealing or do any other crime in public space. It deters because they think, oh, I might get caught. And it detects, it catches people and you see literally hundreds of knives being recovered off people every week. Now, if they weren't recovered, those knives are out in public space and even if the people carrying them aren't intending to use them, when something kicks off, a bit of road rage, someone looks at them a bit askance, some argument about a girl, there's a knife that can be pulled out and someone ends up dead and someone ends up doing life. I mean, something's got to be done, Ken. Exactly. A absolutely, and something is being done. And it's supposed to be the what? public health, yeah. supposed to be the public health pro um, programme. Which Lots means, talk. No, what it's supposed to mean is that we're bringing together all different groups, people like grassroots groups, or people like, um, like Community Against Violence. And what we do, quite simply, we go into the hotspot areas, uh, that they term hotspot areas, and we engage with everyone in that space, and including the young people. But because I, I, t I tell you why we do that, because you've got the drug dealer who's grooming those young people in those space that we're competing against. But we must stand up and stand up and tell these young people there is an alternative. Well, We've no, got no, a model. OK, well, look, look, I mean, that sounds, that, that sounds good. A lot of people will applaud that. But as, as Peter said, it's not working in the sense that knife crime is going up and up and up. What, you tell me the stop and search is working? It hasn't worked for 40 years. So why is it going to work today? Because all, it's, all that's happening it's not is, the the, is, is, is the misuse of it. It's, it's good to, what it is, the young, the young police officers haven't got the cutest to know how to engage with people. Uh, if they brought back people, maybe people like Peter in there, who's got a bit more experience about engaging, then they might make the, the, the engagement a bit more uh, palatable. Peter, really, you're I'm saying really... it's not the only answer. It's you're not that it's deployed alongside other methods. Absolutely. What, what, the what public health say? approach is quite right. 
But if you look at what happened in Glasgow, and this government, to avoid having to put back the police they've taken away, have pretended that police were not part of the Glasgow public health approach. They were. If you speak to them, they had hard enforcement. They raised um, stop and search. They raised the penalties in the first hit to get peace on the streets, to allow all these other longer term initiatives, which have all got to be done, youth work, health, mental health, you name it, addressing all the underlying causes, but they are all slow time. Listen, we haven't got here overnight, so what makes you think that there's going to be a one-night stand that's going to bring about a difference? It's not. Right? No so what's going to happen is, is that I'm telling you quite clearly that Sex and 60 will not work. How are you going I, to I, I, And I'm telling you that they're going to come up with some sort of thing saying, you know what, it's deterrent. How can you... I'm standing in a space. How can you uh, measure what my deterrent you can't. is? That's on the problem there. with it. So, so I'm saying, so don't, don't use that. that I want to see more knives and guns off our streets. I want to see more appropriate intelligence targeting. They're not going to do it when they alienate the very community. Not only, I'm, not talking, about, I'm not talking out. about only black community. I'm talking about young white boys and girls. If you, let Pete, let by if you find out no. kids carried a knife, do you ring the police and tell them? I, I asked that to, I did a stop and search workshop, uh, 50 young people, and I asked them who would, who would give up the information to the police. Only one person put their hands up. So how are the police going to so, do intelligence-led so, 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 so how, how are they? That means that the police got to come with a charm offence to win the other 49 minds and mindsets so that we can give up the intelligence. You can't do it Peter, any other Peter, way. do you accept that there, there have been issues with, with stop and search? In, in of course of there have. Being, and I totally and agree so with how is, it's done. Right. And Theresa May basically destroying stop and no, search she did, she did a good thing. eight years ago, which has been reversed. That's what's happened today. She's done a good thing. what she did. Um, that means we've got eight years' worth of officers that are not familiar with doing stop and search. And as most officers on response teams are three or four years' service, they are not familiar with doing it. So there's going to be friction. I'm concerned about that. Mm -hmm. But as Ken says, we've had 40 years of this debate, and we've got nowhere. Perhaps that indicates that the narrative is wrong. We need to change the narrative. The disproportionality figures are not reliable, they are based on a false premise, and, you know, that's not me saying that, there's researchers, Waddington, um, uh, 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 Marion Fitzgerald, um, and even Ben Bowling, who's not a pro-police, pro-stop-and-search person at all, did a review of it and said, yeah, you're right, the street population, as opposed to the census population, is what, you know, we could use as the measure. Um, but it's, it's difficult to, to know what that is, so this is the best I mean, I think essentially do. you're not agreeing. I mean, you both admit that stop and search has its uses done sensitively, deployed correctly, um, but it's only part of the, the, the solution. Absolutely. And monitored, and monitored. You know, I would challenge any of you to come down and see the data that I see, right? And to say to you, look at this, and you can see there's a pattern of misuse of the stop and search that, I, that, that quite clearly comes apparent. And then, then you will realise why Producer. young people are not going to step up and All support right. the police Ken, in this. Ken and Peter, thank you so much for uh, taking part in this thank debate. You. Obviously, we could talk about this for, for a lot longer, but we, we are could limited and we on need time. To. We do need to. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. We've got the sport, Heather.